So in this segment, we're going to be talking about Brexit uh, friction pushing the UK, pushing UK companies to set up Dutch trade hubs because um, what they're doing is essentially moving their stuff to uh, warehouses in the Netherlands and then they can export them to EU customers without any problems. Um, we saw the, uh, I think it's the CEO of JD or one of the people higher up in JD said that because of Brexit, they're having to set up fulfillment centers in the EU to avoid um, border problems. So another huge Brexit win for the EU, I suppose. And this is just comical, honestly. Um, we're going to do a, a kind of an, another story around this, around Robert Jenrick's constituency, because there's a, a uh, manufacturing hub that's a plant that's moved out of there into uh, the EU because of similar reasons. So we're going to cover that at some point, um, but I just need to get around to it. I've got loads of tabs open because of Pretty Patel and doing a stream on her. So I need to get rid of all of that stuff. So I'll probably do that on Friday. I don't, I don't know time anymore because of schedules. Anyways, I digress. While the UK government launches a search for Brexit opportunities, one group has already discovered them the uh, Dutch warehouse owners and this you know a lot of companies have set up subsidiaries within the Netherlands because there are low tax um, English is excellent over there I speak English better than a lot of people here honestly and um, very well educated um, uh, well educated group of people as well um, Dutch engineers are here are the best around an influx of British based companies to the Netherlands have swelled as they struggle with the disruption of customs border of customs borders across the North Sea. More than 90 investors have built or rented distribution space since 2017. So this is happening before Brexit finalised, really. And that was to do with the uncertainty around Brexit at that time. That would have been under Theresa May's tenure. Half of them in 2021, which no surprise there, that's when the import checks kicked in for UK goods. According to the government agency Invest in Holland, they include Hubu, a logistics provider to online retailers. Martin Beesch, chief executive, said it had to act after clients deserted uh, as Brexit negotiations went to the wire in December 2020. Essentially, people were unsure what's going on. It looked like a no deal at the time. Um, so they were like, look, we're going to face potentially full um, import checks. Uh, we outdog. He says, uh, we lost about 10% of our revenue, which was clients leaving the UK for Europe. He said it was a chaotic landscape. It was eventually an agreement for tariff-free, quota-free uh, trade deal was clinched on Christmas Eve, but this introduced customs, food safety and tax controls after a year-long transition period. So the, these started in 21 and you know we've got the full shebang uh, starting this year. And so Boris Johnson said there would be no non-tariff barriers. So had this group of people listened to Boris Johnson, they would have been screwed because there are non-tariff barriers. He says, we didn't know what to do. There was almost no government advice, said Baish, which is true, apart from set up a subsidiary within the EU, which they haven't set up a subsidiary, I guess, uh, but they have, I suppose they would have to, I think, um, some sort of like shop. They've set up shop in the Netherlands, really. Many smaller companies simply stopped supplying to the EU because they could not understand the paperwork and were worried they would be trading illegally, he said. I, I don't think they would necessarily be too worried about trading illegally. It's just their, their goods would get rejected. You know, we spoke about there was a person who made those weird custom chocolate eggs for, e uh, for Easter. That guy's products were rejected. We've talked about a third, I think, of UK exporters to the EU are gone because of the paperwork. So, yeah, I kind of get his point. You know, no one wants to get their stuff rejected at the border, and the paperwork sounds very complicated. I haven't seen it, but there are mounds of paper, essentially. Hubu had already been looking to rent a warehouse in Germany, but the pandemic and bureaucracy had delayed the process. It switched to the Netherlands, and by June 21, so halfway through, we faced import. Uh, there were EU import checks. It set a facility in Eindhoven near the Belgian border, was operational with 40 staff. The Netherlands is a great place to uh, set up a business, he says. They are ready to help and they sit next to so many key markets. You know, the Dutch are a big trade hub, I think, for Europe. You know, Rotterdam, the biggest port in Europe. And, um, you know, they they were very happy to take business from the UK. And, you know, we're not teammates anymore. We're competitors, as a wise man once said. The UK companies could, can send a pallet at a time, keeping stock there rather than sending individual items directly from the UK to consumers. Each one would require a customs form. So instead of sending it by bulk, so it's easier to get through customs um, because you don't have loads of small bits of paperwork. You just have large amounts of it, I guess. 
for companies that source their product in the EU, bring it into the UK, send it back to the EU makes even less commercial sense. So if you um, if you buy something uh, like uh, ingredients or whatever, and then you turn it into maybe a compound product in the UK, only to re-export it into the EU doesn't make sense. So what you do is you try and make the whole thing in the EU and either sell it in the EU or to the UK. Makes sense, right? It doesn't, Brexit doesn't make sense. Snag, which sells Italian-made tights and other clothes online, had to take a decision in 21 to accommodate growth, build a new distribution in the UK or in the EU, which accounted for a third of its sales, the EU. So we don't know what the split is in terms of how much they sell in the UK, how much they sell to the rest of the world, but evidently they chose the EU. Tom Martin, chief executive, said he decided on the EU at the time there was still no trade deal and none was guaranteed. It was a great decision. Um, yeah, it was, to be fair. And the problem is, right, there is a much higher population of people in the EU. They might not have as much purchasing power um, in different states such as Poland, um, Hungary and all of these sorts of countries, but you still have growth potential uh, to move into these markets. You might not sell as high volume as you will in the UK, but um, at least you can do it customs paperwork free, right? Uh, Snag chose the Netherlands. The corridor from the port of Rotterdam in the west, Venlo, in the east is crammed with road, rail and traffic, uh, river traffic taking goods to and from warehouses. So essentially it's built, uh, this area in Rotterdam is built for trade, it's built for exports and imports by the sounds of it. You know, as I said, you know, Dutch engineers, the best around. Germany is our biggest EU market. We can now ship there the next day, Martin said, because obviously um, the Netherlands is geographically next to Germany and also being in such a good port, you could ship stuff over really quickly. But I'm guessing they would ship it by road, um, given that there'd be road routes there rather than going by sea. But I know nothing about this stuff. Snag had a choice of premises, but that has uh, that has narrowed as more UK-based international business arrive. So you can see here that they had they have to move quickly if you're planning to move to the Netherlands you've got to do it soon because there's more competition for space more competition for space means increased rent space staffing has also been an issue the Netherlands had just 3.4 percent of uh 3.4 percent percent god 3.4 percent unemployment so very low unemployment and um yeah you know it shows unemployment is not the the sole economic measure but it's an okay economic measure to use evidently a lot of people in the netherlands have work depending on how they measure unemployment statistics this is where it gets really interesting for me um he says it's also harder to hire temporary workers vital in e-commerce industries when orders peak before christmas in the uk agency workers are almost available on tap but the netherlands has higher social benefits wages for permanent staff are 10 percent more than in the uk but temporary staff cost twice as much said martin and i'm not sure why temporary staff cost so much more um, it must mean twice as much um, from the UK, it's probably because of increased wages, agency fees, and also higher worker rights as well. He said uh, Dutch employers also cover commuting costs, which is crazy. Never heard of that before, um, but I guess it makes sense. But he said it was still economic t to operate there. So despite having to pay workers more, 10% more, and having to pay a lot more for agency staff, and also pay for commuting costs, it's still more feasible to set up shop in the Netherlands than it is to set up shop in the UK for this company because they don't want to hit a snag, get it? But um, yeah, it just it doesn't surprise me at all. And we'll see more and more of this. I think more and more kind of companies set up shop uh, or set up warehouses, maybe not just in the Netherlands, but in other EU countries, probably Central Central European countries. Since 2017, the amount of warehouse space at the port has doubled to four... Um, Four, is that, I'm not sure that is four square meters or four hectare, four hundred hectares. Um, there is also demand, and Brexit is one of the factors," said Danny Levens, Ward, director of Break Bulk at the port. He said many international companies also wanted buffer stock because of the disruption of supply chains caused by the pandemic. So, essentially, um, what they want is more stock just in case they can't get it because of the shortage of lorry drivers or any other issues in case the big boat gets stuck in. Um, the Suez Canal again, because that was fun. I think they had another boat problem, that same company. Rotterdam um, was Brexit ready after updating its processing systems and educating traders, which is insane because there was little to nothing happening at the port of Dover for years, and there are barely any education for traders, so they face all sorts of problems, to the point where um, small companies exporting to the UK will face a lot of issues once the UK does the full shebang of import checks, which apparently we're getting closer to not doing. Um, at least kicking it to the long grass, which is hilarious. But um, yeah, 
what more can you say about that? Truckers, freight forwarders, and customs agents must register with Portbase, a non-profit company. I think customs agents in the UK have to register with HMRC or another, uh, some other organisation. Don't quote me on that. Brexit has increased the company's workload by a fifth, but its manager will said Martin Marty Van Pelt, business relations manager. No doubt they've been training more customs agents over the last few years so they can help traders deal with the increased paperwork because anything going up by fifth the workload is a lot but it does show you that a fifth you know given that the you know in countries within the eu trade with each other they don't really face a load of customs paperwork so i think it kind of shows you how much trade the netherlands does with third countries he says we don't have queues the longest wait is four minutes which is a drip would be a dream in the uk which the time which is the time customs officers have to decide if they want to inspect something so essentially four minutes they can decide that looks suspicious or sus as the kids say let's have a look or they could say no it's fine let go the number but the number of uk customers has dropped from 367 to 300 since brexit as many truck companies give up on delivering to the eu because of the increased paperwork it's not just the increased paperwork it's the delays at the border which we saw over the last week what you know 24 25 hours insane and the chance that your but stuff can get rejected because of dodgy paperwork or incorrect paperwork. It's just bizarre, especially when we don't have a digitized system because instead of using the EU's IT system, we decided to have our own sovereign system. And just like British IT systems, they don't work. But yeah, you know, there wasn't much more I want to say, but essentially it looks like the Dutch have set up um, agencies in order to help UK businesses move over to the Netherlands. There's a dedicated council service for um, immigrants in English. Executives at foreign companies are welcome at a red carpet dinner every year with the mayor. So essentially this is a this is a concerted effort by the Dutch to take away business from the UK. And you know what? Like I said, we're not teammates, we're competitors. And we've been covering the Dutch efforts for a while and I don't blame them at all. Um, you know, our loss is their gain and fair play to them. If there's any country I'd want to move to, it's probably the Netherlands. And um, yeah, fair play to them, honestly. They're taking uh, a lot of business from the UK, or maybe not a lot, but some. And they're creating more jobs in the Netherlands for, you know, themselves or other EU member states, you know, workers from those countries. So absolutely well done, mate. Oh, well done, N Dutch people. Love you guys. Anyways, I'm going to leave it there. Let me know what you think in the in the comments below. Like, comment, share, subscribe. Support the channel on Patreon if you can. And hopefully I'll see you in the next one.